Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at the PvP track in New World. It's something that's definitely new to a lot of returning players that are coming to New World that love PvP. It's great to kind of have that new PvP approach that we've seen out of Amazon Game Studios. We have the large bundle of coin as the last thing I bought in Checkpoint 1 when it comes down to Track 5. You can see here the Azoth Salt is the currency of these PvP tracks. You can gain Azoth Salt by engaging in War, Outpost Rush, 3v3 Arenas, PvP Missions, and Open World PvP Kills. And earning XP, by the way, while flagged is definitely another thing you can do to gain Azoth Salt. So you can also see the Azal Salt Balance is capped at 100,000. You shouldn't have a problem with spending as much as possible. You can see there's great rewards here. Large bundle of coins is my most recent one at 805 gold. But there's great, great rewards that usually come into play during checkpoint three. This is the biggest checkpoint where you need the most PvP XP. And this is where you can find some of the best gear in the game when it comes to PvP gear. So let's take a look at some of the best PvP gear in the game and how to get it. So we're on New World Database. The first thing you're going to want to do is actually go to Legendary Gear and Acquisition, of course, PvP. These are going to be all the different gear you can get that are Legendary status through the PvP track. Most of these, if you click, they'll actually show you exactly where they come from. So here you'll see PvP Reward. This item can randomly appear or drop on the PvP Rewards tracks on the following checkpoints. So here you'll see checkpoint three is a majority of these are checkpoint three, by the way. And you can see the price of Azoth Salt that you'll want to make sure you have when you get to this stage. You can also see the PvP track level requirement, typically five plus, which is great to see. And then also the level requirement of the player, obviously 60 plus. So the big thing to note here is once you get five plus on the PvP track, you're going to start having options at uh, tier three or you know that third stage of the track level where you are going to have a chance of dropping some of these legendary pieces and they are insanely good so this one's really really solid helm of the bear it does have constitution of course as the stat it's a heavy head so constitution is what you're going to want obviously if you're going heavy anyway it's got resilient elemental ward already slotted in it which is not crazy good because you know elemental sometimes you want to be able to kind of swap that in and out let's see if it does let you the gem on this item actually can be replaced so it's not a big deal it just comes with the gem that uh, you can keep if you want in there so it's this is actually really really solid sometimes like i said you can't replace these so uh, you have refreshing ward and you have shirking heels so this is a really solid item uh, across the board you know depending on what you want to go for this is going to be a great starter uh, a starter helm at the very very least we also have baleful protector which is going to be basically the exact same thing besides it's going to be a heavy chest we go to the heavy glove like i said the exact same thing just going to be a heavy glove instead we go to the heavy leg you heard me the same thing. Heavy metal slips, the same thing. So they do have a huge, great constitution set that you can get here that has all of the refreshing ward on them, resilient and shirking heels. So if that's a build you like, PvP tracks is going to be for you. As we move a little bit farther forward, there's so many great items to be had and seen quite yet in this video. So here we have the medium headwear. Constitution is great to always have, by the way. You know, every build requires a little bit of constitution typically. So all of these items having constitution makes them very, very viable in many situations. This is going to be basically the same thing, uh, these, these next five pieces of gear, but for medium wares or, you know, medium uh, pieces of gear. So we have medium headwear with a 25 con. Critical hit deals that 4.8% less damage to you because resilient. Elemental ward that can be replaced. Refreshing evasion. And then that shirking heals. And that is all five pieces of gear. So the white shoes as well as the mark, the footman grips, and the dragatot. Uh, that I believe is how you say that one. But uh, as we move farther down, of course, we're going to get a light five piece set that is the exact same thing. So I'm not going to you know, walk you guys through this one as much, but you can see the light pieces all being the exact same 25 con resilient physical ward actually on this one to start reducing max cooldown by 2.8% and then the shirking heel. So really, really solid across the board, those beginning pieces. So now that we're getting to something just a little bit different, uh, after we get out of the resilient kind of, uh, you know, gear. We're going to have the Sword of the Champion. This is going to be a 15 strength, 11% critical damage, vicious perk. Uh, we have the Cruel on it as well, so it's going to be having a uh, gem come with it, but like I said, this can be replaced, so it's not a big deal. Uh, keenly Empowered, and then Penetrating Backstab. 
So this is kind of underwhelming depending on the build you're going. Uh, I do like it all together though because it does give you that viable option of making a damage build with the sword and shield instead of just going straight defense. Um, but realistically, this is going to be one of the better offensive swords out there right now. So a very, very cool weapon to see as well coming straight from the PvP tracks. We also have Berserker's Axe. This is going to be a 30 strength, vicious, keenly empowered penetrating backstab. It's a hatchet. It's not bad at all. Definitely one a lot of people are going for. You have to remember there's so many great options out there because people can individually craft and there's so much RNG great weapons out there. But if you're not looking to send, you know, 50 to 150k, this Berserker's Axe may be one of the best ones you can find um, for free, you know, going through just PvP tracks and playing PvP on the game. We have Heft next in line. It's going to be 30 strength, 11% critical damage with Vicious. We have a Cruel Gem, but no worries. We have Keenly Empowered and Fractured Rend. I'm a big fan of Fractured Rend here. We have Wind Block breaking a player inflict rend reducing damage absorption by 12 percent for four seconds unfortunately this is going to be a pvp only perk which is not too unfortunate just because like i said you are going to use this probably in a lot of war scenarios where you are able to inflict rend on some of their big tanks uh, but realistically this is a little underwhelming just because of fractured rend being probably not the best perk for somebody going Warhammer and Keenly Empowered is not bad as as well, but there's just other hammers that I believe are just a tad better. Uh, we have Violent Wraith as well. So this is going to, uh, sorry, Violent Wreath. This is going to be one that I do like. We have Fractured Rend, Keenly Empowered and Vicious yet again. It's going to be basically the same thing, um, but it's just like I said, it's going to be that mid tier where there is better out there but uh, it's definitely a solid option to get for free. Then we have Bowman's Pride. So this is going to be the exact same thing. Besides, we're going to change out the uh, the Fractured Rend with the Penetrating Headshot, which is huge. So Headshots penetrate 22% of a player's armor. It's going to make it do a lot of damage. However, there's a lot of bows out there with Keen already on them. Taking that Keen away for something like this, is it viable? Um, you know, a lot of people will debate that, but it's a very solid bow at the very least that you can get in the PVP track. We also have mindfulness. So mindfulness, kind of the same thing. We're going to have penetrating headshot again, though, on this musket. It's a very solid musket. Yet again, we have the flint stick. So this is going to be the fire staff that a lot of people love, uh, just because they have that deal 8% additional damage to players with haste. And a lot of people do have haste in a, many of their abilities. So Flint Sticks, pretty solid. It's definitely not the best out there. Um, you know, we have a lot of people going for that Outpost Rush uh, Fire Staff. So this is one that probably gets a little bit of a back burner in this case. The Font is another great little Life Staff that you can take advantage of. The PvP only gives you an additional 8 damage, or sorry, 8% damage to players with haste, which is pretty below average. We also have the Light and Heavy Attacks reduce your active weapon cooldowns by 2 8 sorry 2.8 percent but the blessed 20 percent healing makes it a really solid staff all around frontline point this is going to be a spear with 30 decks this time i think we had one earlier with 30 strength uh, maybe we didn't i thought we did but we we might not have if we go back though to frontline point you can see some of the big things that they do they love the penetrating backstab giving you backstabs penetrating 27 percent of a player's armor so you don't want to turn your back to some of these spear players they're going to do a lot of damage we have Officer Ceremony. This is a nice little uh, PvP weapon as well. Of course, the same kind of style as the Frontline Point. It's going to have that PvP perk that gives you additional 27% penetration on the player's armor. Then we have Swath. So Ice Gauntlet here, PvP only, dealing 8% additional damage to players with haste. They kind of all have the same perks, if you haven't noticed, when it comes to weapons and gear. I promise you we are getting to some of the biggest stuff in PvP uh, reward-wise. It's going to be the Champion Earring, Champion's Ring, and Champion Amulet. We're going to get there in just a second. But we have the Sentinel's Claw as well, another decent item when it comes to Void Gauntlet. It's not bad to get some of these early on, and then you can actually upgrade from there when you get that kind of money or you know the materials to craft those or go into those dungeons and actually get the RNG you needed. We have Fired Fury as well. So this is another great option for the blunderbuss. Uh, but then we get to, like I said, the three that I wanted to talk about mostly all day today is the champion's earring, the champion's ring, and the champion's amulet. These are the best three really jewelry pieces that you can get 
when it comes to PvP. So Champion's Earring's huge. It's got 25 con, Refreshing Toast, which is one of the best, obviously, perks when it comes to earrings. Reduces max cooldown by 2.8%. Refreshing, which is huge. Regenerating, which is really nice as well. You gain 0.48% health every second. So that's just a great all-around earring. One thing you'll notice as well is every single piece of these jewelry, uh, champion jewelries here, it does use Khan as its primary stat, which is huge because that kind of gives us all the option to use these in every single one of our builds if we want to or if they make sense. So champion's earring, champion's ring, doing great things. Champion's Ring, I didn't think I finished here, but we had the Hardy, which is 9.6% more max stamina. And then we have the 11% critical chance, which is keen awareness, which you always want on your ring for the most part, damage dealers. And then we have Invigorated Punishment, which basically abilities deal 2% more damage per buff on a player. It's not huge, huge, but uh, the other two make up for it. We also have the Champion's Amulet, which is last but not least, with maybe one of the best amulets in the game. You have 9.4% more health, stamina recovery, which is definitely one of the best perks in the game, and then Shirking Empower, which is a fairly solid uh, Empower as well. That's a nice little PvP perk. In this case, these are the best three amulets when it comes to PvP, unless you're getting really, really lucky with RNG, or you have a ton of gold where you can just buy the best gear in the game. So. The PvP track is not underwhelming, folks. I think a lot of people are under, kind of underestimating what you can actually get in these PvP tracks. But uh, definitely, if you see any of these champion jewelries, that's something you shouldn't really hesitate on. I think they're all worth it for the long haul. You know, that constitution primary stat's also going to make them good. And like I said, in any build you do, which makes them the best option in PvP for a lot of us. So thank you guys again for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. I'll see you guys all in the next one.